Hi, this is Lou, welcome to my channel, and today's video is going to be the fourth in my series of watercolour essentials, basics. Uh, each one is a bit of a chat about something to do with watercolour, and then there's a project afterwards. So today's video is going to be all about brushes, so different types of watercolour brushes, and then the different things that you can do with watercolour brushes. And today's project is going to be a uh, painting a pattern of leaves. So we're going to paint a wash first, get some really nice kind of subtle colour in the background, and then I'm going to paint layers of really simple stems and leaves over the top. So today I've got my watercolour palette here, I've got my jars of water, some paper towel for drying my brush, and I've got some little bits of watercolour paper that I've cut out for testing things on. I've also got quite a variety of different brushes. So this is a selection of some of the watercolour brushes that I've got. So I've got like a fairly biggish one here. You can get much bigger brushes than this, you can get mop brushes, but I don't have any, so this is the biggest one that I've got. Um, and then I've got like quite a few like smallish round brushes here. Um, some of these are sable and then some of them are synthetic. So I've got a variety of those in different sizes. So I've got a little square brush here, this is a 3 16th inch and again it's a synthetic brush. I've got a fairly small, like very fine pointed brush um, and I managed to splay out one of the hairs on this, um, which is a bit of a pain. Um, it comes with a little plastic um, sleeve and I managed to get some of the hairs trapped in the sleeve um, and they've kind of dried like that. So if anybody has any tips for getting that back to like uh, back to being nice and straight, then I would appreciate it. Um, but generally when you wet it, they all kind of clump together and it works fine. So for today I'm just going to mix up some colour, doesn't matter which colour. I'm going to go for this Prussian blue. And then um, I just want to do some practicing today with different types and sizes of brushes and to see what different types of effects I can get. So I know that I can um, pull the brush across the page and get like a quite a stripe like that that's kind of as wide as the brush is. I can also use the brush to outline an area and then fill it in. I can also use the very tip of the brush and drag that along and get a very fine line. It takes a little bit of practice and control to be able to do that. And then you can alternate them as well. So you can start out thin, press your brush down, get a thicker line and lift it up again, press it down and lift it up again press it down and lift it up again. Now I'm going to do the same thing again with the sable haired brush. So again I can drag a line along that's as wide as my brush is. I can use it to outline an area and fill it in. I can use the very tip of it to create really fine lines. And I can also alternate between fine, press the brush down, fine line, press the brush down, and fine line, and press the brush down. I found that these brushes are very, very similar. In fact, they're the same brand. But the synthetic brush gives me an awful lot more control over uh, kind of getting nice edges on uh, solid areas of colour and that kind of thing. Um, the sable haired brush is much better for getting the difference between the thick and the thin lines. So, this is the thinnest line. I can get 
with the sable haired brush. And then this is the thinnest line I can get with the synthetic brush. I think I can even get a skinnier, more detailed line. There, so I can get a much finer line, but it takes an awful lot more practice and it's a lot harder to control. So the bigger brush, even though it's a lot bigger, you can get exactly the same effects. You can colour in areas. And even though it's quite a big brush, I can still get a reasonably fine line with the tip. So a big brush like this can give you a lot of versatility. You can also paint swirls. For a slightly different shape, a square brush can help you paint a really smooth straight line. You can make some really interesting marks with it. And you can use it to paint nice square shapes because you can get nice corners with it. So it's useful if you're painting something like bricks or houses because the square shape helps you get those nice straight edges and sharp corners. You can also do thin thick lines with a square brush. So a thick line one way and a thin line the other. So I uh, really like this really fine brush. It allows you to get a really good consistent fine line. So if you're struggling to get a consistent line with a, a larger round brush, then switch to a smaller one and um, it will give you a bit more control. Having said that, it is really useful to be able to do a variety of different strokes with a bigger brush. It's much more versatile. You can also use brushes like on their side. So you get a really nice kind of dry brush mark like that, where you see the texture of the paper coming through. And that can be really fun if you're doing like landscapes, so you can use that um, for making the sea, and that looks like the water sparkling on the sea. So I recommend that you do something like this, especially if it's, especially if you're new to watercolour. Spend some time just manoeuvring the brush and making some simple patterns and just seeing what your brushes can do and how to get different effects with them. So I'm going to be doing a uh, pattern piece now where we use the ability of these round brushes to go from thin to thick and to paint some stems and leaves. So I'm going to do the whole thing with um, two different brushes. So I'm going to have a big one to paint the background and I'm just going to paint a wash of colour all over the background. And then I'm going to use a medium sized brush and I'm going to use that to paint some stems and leaves. And I'll show you how I do that. So I've taped my paper down to the table and the first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to put a background layer on of some nice pastel -y colours um, and I'm just going to start in one corner and uh, go across the page uh, blending the colours as they're wet. 
So I'm just going to put the colour on and spread it round. That's pretty much it. And then just blend colours one into the next one. A little bit of one colour, a little bit of the other. That's maybe a bit deep, so I'll add a bit more water in there. going to be covering my watercolour uh, page with um, a whole series of stems and leaves. And I'm going to do them exactly the same way each time. And this is a really good exercise for learning brush control because you're um, going between using the very tip of the brush and using it to create a very fine line and then using the body of the brush to create the leaves. So for each one I'm going to do a nice fine stem. Uh, at the end of the stem I'm going to press down my brush and lift it up and get it to a point. And then along the length of the stem I'm going to put the point down, press my brush down, lift it up and bring my leaf to a point again. And you can go in and smooth the edges and fix the shape if you want to. I'm going to add another one on this side. Press my brush down and lift it up. And again, press my brush down and lift it up. Another one on this side. And each time I'm going from using just the very tip of the brush and not putting very much pressure on it to pressing it down, making it as wide as possible and then lifting it up. And sometimes I'm giving it a little flick at the end just to create some of that shape of a leaf that makes it look a little bit more organic. And as my paint is drying you can see that there are some darker areas and some lighter ones and I like that kind of variation. Um, so I'm going to leave that as it is. If you wanted a, a much flatter shape, you could go in and spread the paint around in each of those leaves um, and, until it was kind of nice and even, so it dried nice and evenly. So I'm going to do another practice one. I'm going to zoom you in for that so you can see a little better. Let's do a pink one. And let's do one going towards me. So not very much pressure, just using the tip of my brush to get the nice fine stem, then pressing down and lifting up till we get to a point. And I can just fix that shape a little bit. And going with the point, press down and lift up. Go with the point, press down, and lift up and keep going right down the stem alternating the leaves one on each side so tip of my brush press down lift up so I'll, all I'm going to do is go over the whole of my watercolor page with these leaves in the same colors that I put on the background uh, but just a little bit stronger And I'm going to make them go in all sorts of different directions. So there's my stem, a leaf at the top, and then leaves down the sides. Make that one a bit bigger. 
I'll emphasize the point a bit. And I'm pulling the pen, not the pen, I'm pulling the brush in the direction that I want it to go. Which sometimes means getting a hand into some weird positions. So one more on there. There we go. So I'm just going to keep going and filling the whole page with these. This one I'm going to have coming from this side. And if your leaves overlap a little bit, that's okay. And if the colours bleed into one another, then that's good too.
So here's my final painting. And I really enjoyed doing this one. There's something really relaxing and meditative about just making the same brush strokes over and over again. And I like the way that you get kind of messy areas where the colours bleed and blend together. And I like the soft, subtle tones of this one. So for this, I used my uh, number seven Proline Pro Art uh, synthetic brush. And as you can see, it comes to a point, but it's not the finest point. So if I wanted to do this and get thinner stems for my leaves, which uh, in some cases you might want and it might look a bit nicer, um, then I'd pick a different brush for that because I know that this one can give me a reasonably fine point, but not a terribly fine one. Uh, but it gives me a lot of control over the, the leaf shapes, so I like it for that. So thanks very much for watching today. I really hope that you've enjoyed this. If you did, uh, then please give the video a thumbs up. And if you'd like to see more like this, then do subscribe. And if you press the little bell button, you should get a notification when I put up a new video. So if you paint this along with me, I'd love to see what you make. You can always post it on Instagram and tag me at Lou Rachel Davis. And I really love sharing in all of the work that you've made. So thanks very much for watching. And I look forward to seeing you again very, very soon. Bye bye.